So you've updated your visual brand and you're ready to build your pages. So where do you start? Well, let's explore all things page builder. A good place to start is to understand Razor's campaign templates. On sign up, you chose either an appeal template or a peer to peer template. Event, activity or community hubs are just different versions of a peer to peer campaign template. Now, each template is basically a pre-built site with commonly used features. That's why when you compare an appeal campaign to a peer to peer campaign, you will see different pages available and different page layouts and elements also. If you wish to change your template at any time, you can simply create a new campaign and select the template you are after. For the purpose of these videos, we'll keep working on our appeal campaign template. Let's explore pages, as this is where we can access each page of the campaign. For all of your campaigns, you have core pages, custom pages, and system pages. An appeal campaign is simple. With just the header and footer page, home page, and the campaign blog page, if you wish to use it. You can add new custom pages and make links to these from your home page. And you can edit the system pages. Helpful when supporting your regular donors. To get started, let's select the home page and explore the page builder. A web page is made up of rows and columns with specific content blocks placed in each. Think of it kind of like a designer bookcase where every shelf has different items, some taking a whole shelf where others having a number of items across. The goal of great web design is to help your viewers scroll through the rows and absorb intentional content that leads them to an action, whether that be making a donation or registering via a form or simply understanding more about your cause. As the average time spent on a page is around 60 seconds, the rule less is more is a really good starting place. So let's explore the page builder layout. On the top navigation bar, you'll find the home button, taking you to the previous page. Pages, giving you quick access to other pages to edit. The CSS style sheet access, the support link, and the all important undo and redo, allowing you to reverse some of your changes. On the right, you will also find the responsive select, allowing you to view the site in desktop, tablet, or mobile. View site, which opens a preview for your site in a new window. Save which obviously saves your changes. And finally, page settings. Use the help button on the bottom left to find support articles and more helpful resources as well. Now the all important add button allows you to add new rows and columns and also use save row templates. You can also use the add button for adding new content blocks, which you'll do often. The search option is a helpful shortcut to find the block you are after. On each row, you will find four options. Row settings, where you can edit colors, background, column settings, and advanced options. Trash, to remove the row. Make a copy, which can just save you a lot of time. And save as template, so you can use the row within other pages. As mentioned, the column settings are within your row settings. Here you can change a column's background, text color, padding and margin adjustments, and also add custom classes for further customization. Within the row, you also have similar options available for each content block, with the added option of moving the block somewhere else. Your block's general settings are specific to each block, though your style and advanced settings will be similar. Now note, every time you enter your settings, be sure to apply your changes with a tick button, otherwise they will not save. 
And don't forget to save your page changes as you make those edits as well. You can also add new rows or change the row order by hovering over the top of the row for more options. Now that you're familiar with the page builder, you're ready to get building. If you are new to page building, you can always create a copy of the home page to play around on and save rows and templates to use it on your actual home page. This can help you get familiar with the builder with little risk of needing to start again. Another helpful tip is to use an existing website's page layout. This could be one from your own organization or another. Look at the page and observe the use of rows and columns and how images and text are laid out. Even just drawing a rough sketch on how your page can come together can really save you a lot of time. Now, a brief mention on mobile responsive design is important, as many of your donors will experience your site not on desktop, but on their handheld device. As the screen size is smaller, everything in your rows now must adjust, which is why it's named responsive design. If you think of your rows like a bookcase, when viewed on mobile, it's like making your bookcase higher and skinnier as the content on each shelf is now needing to be stacked upon each other. For many basic rows, this responsiveness will require little to no changes. Though, as your rows become more complex, you will find that when the site responds to the mobile dimensions, things may start looking out of whack. Raisley accounts for this by giving you the option to adjust settings based on device. You can also hide rows and columns and blocks for specific devices, helpful when needing to create separate desktop and mobile versions for say a row. To explore more about responsive design within Raisley and other support guides, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Now I've gone ahead and made some changes to my homepage with some additional rows and content and images. It doesn't take too long to get the hang of it. And with the help of our support guides, you'll be able to do some pretty cool things. But we encourage you to start building your pages and shoot through any questions you may have in the comments below. Next, we're gonna explore all things communication as you seek to support your donor's journey.